My name is Zama Tawhiri. That's who I am. Um, I met Nidu in um, 2012 while I was serving. And yeah, we, we started off up there. Yeah. I met him through a mutual friend. And yeah, we, we got into a relationship. That's how I met Nidu. We got married in 2013. Um, I had my first, my son, and then afterwards the, the girls came along, you know. Um, yeah, the marriage was good in the beginning. Second year of the marriage was rough, it was hard. I think that was when everything just, you know. Um, for me, I, I always tell anyone that cares to listen that um, I I wasn't totally ready to get married I wasn't mature enough to get married well hey I got married I had my kids life was good in the beginning yeah so yeah married life was okay <music> I can't remember. I have erased that part of my life. It's so bad that I can't even remember dates. I can't remember the day I got married. The date. I can't remember. Honestly, I'm not... Honestly, I can't remember the, my, my wedding anniversary. I can't remember. I don't know the date I got married traditionally um, in court. I, I, can, I cannot remember. I don't know. I, I can't remember. So I, I, I actually have erased up. I'm telling you the truth. I cannot remember. I can't remember the nice times we had. I can't. I can't remember. Honestly, this is not to make anybody look bad, but I can't remember. I can't tell you this. Oh, oh. We did, we never went on vacations now. It's not like ah. Oh. He never gave me a massage. Never booked a massage session for me. He never took me shopping. I can't remember. Honestly, I can't, I can't remember. No jokes. I can't. I can't remember. You know, I still see signs here and there. Um, we started um, having issues yeah and that was you know the beginning of the whole um, domestic violence and crazy <laughs> So while in the marriage I, I, I did not speak up because I was trying to protect him I was trying to protect my kids I was trying to protect him because for every time it happened I always heard oh please don't tell my endorsements you will lose everything you guys are going to suffer the kids can be able to go to school you know so I kept protecting him but when it got really serious I started you know trying to reach out to people if you if some of your s celebrities if they check their dms they'll see me nobody knew me but you know i tried to reach out to people that i felt could reach out to him for me and um yeah i i reported once at the police station but with that i learned a great lesson that you know the whole celebrity status and all when we got there and they found out who it was all about you know the tables turned so yeah it, it didn't favor me 
so it wasn't encouraging to keep going or keep trying to report after i had my third baby so i had her through um cesarean session that my first ever operation and i had her and we had a disagreement on something but before then he had already said he wanted out so he had already said acting up and i was trying to find out what the problem was and yes yeah, so after i had her i was still of course fresh out of the hospital still bruised you know nursing my pain and yeah that was the last and final beating and i had to because you know people who cared about me kept saying just go and make a complaint just let it be on record that this has been going on at least let it just be there and you know i kept saying oh the father my kids you know and of course he also tried to beg me that day his mom too pleaded with me because she held my my daughter while he beat me up so i i yes i went to the police station and yes that situation that report did it favor me because what happened was that because I was still trying to protect him, I was still trying to convince the people who cared about me that uh, I, I don't want to do this to this guy. He's going to lose his job. He's going to lose his endorsements and all. So I cannot do this. And they still kept pushing me when they saw that, you know, this was getting really bad. So when I now decided to go, this was like weeks later, I got there and I found out that the day after he beat me up, he went to the police station and reported. He did not report himself. He reported that I attacked him and that he's been living with a violent person. And there are no pictures. The only picture he has is the one that he has the bite mark on his arm. And I'm super proud of that one because that is one fight I won. That is one of plenty of things I took. So yeah, he reported himself, the tables turned, nobody believed me with all the evidence, everything. I mean, I have voice recordings of my, my kids on my device. They constantly relieve it. They constantly talk about it. Mommy, do you remember when daddy punched your nose and you bled? Do you remember when you went to the police station? What did my daddy say? What did the police say? Those conversations are on my phone. And my son doesn't like to hear about it. He doesn't like to hear that his ex-father <laughs> is a bad guy. My son is very emotional. He's a very sweet boy. But my girls are very feisty. They're very, you know. So, but my first daughter always really, she always talks about it. So it is not a secret. My kids were involved. They saw it. So yeah. And uh, which year did um, this happen? This particular incident. This one mm -hmm. happened four years ago. Okay. This particular one happened four years ago. But of course, it was a gradual process from slap, throwing cups, you know, punches. It wasn't just physical. There were also it, verbal abuses i mean i still go out and i just didn't care my friends were my friends then didn't want to go out with me because i i became a totally different person you live in the house with somebody you care about you love but this person constantly torments you constantly tells you how much you, <laughs> you don't mean anything to him he tells you about all the good looking girls he sees out there and they bring for him when he goes on his trips. So what do you want to show me? This person constantly makes you feel stupid. So it wasn't just physical, it, it, was, it was more. confused in the beginning when he you know he traveled that weekend came back and said he wanted to talk I said okay I was pregnant at the time so this was like 
say five years ago and um, I I waited for him to talk but before then I called his mom and I asked her did Chinedu call is, any, is everything okay I mean he just got back from a trip I don't know why he's acting funny and she was like is your home okay I said yes there's nothing wrong and she's like okay then I call his dad and he's also like is your house in order I said yes but I'm trying to find out why Chinedu is acting strange and he said no yeah then I call my pastor and he didn't answer on that day so I call his wife who told me that yes yeah your husband called I'm like are you do you know what they talked about or she was like no she didn't know so you know the pregnant woman I mean I waited all day like throughout the day for this conversation and towards the you know night time I just went to bed then the next morning he calls me and you know he starts talking about how he's tired he wants to be a free man he doesn't think he can do this again I was pregnant at the time six months pregnant or seven months thereabouts so I was very vulnerable you know so I was heartbroken like how does your husband travel and come back and then say to you I don't want to do it again so I was confused I kept asking like what happened what's wrong what did I do what have I done you get I was trying to get answers so it was funny because this week he'll tell you I'm not doing it again next week next week he'll call and say you know what I'm very sorry I think we should travel I think I need to work on that trip to Dubai let's travel and after that let's you know let's start dating again you know let's start dating again the next week he will call and say you know what I'm done I'm tired I don't think I did. and I'm like but you just said we should try you know to make things work I was like me did I say that no it wasn't me I never said that me when when did I say that so I was confused a, a whole lot was going on at that point you get so yes it was at that point that he started talking about leaving and how much he wanted to go and it was from a parent in my child's school that I first found out that my husband was seeing somebody I've never been a social media person <laughs> when I got married to him you know the first night after the wedding a friend of mine calls me up, hey, who's your only Daikiji? I'm like, what's his, what's his only Daikiji? I've never been a social media person. So I wasn't on Snapchat. I, you know, so the lady called me, the woman called me. She said, Uzo, I'm sorry, mommy Kayla, that's my, Kayla is my first daughter's name. I'm sorry, I just wanted to ask you a question. I'm like, okay. And she's like, are you and your husband in an open relationship? And I said, no, why? She said, ah, that's some of the things you see on Snap. I'm like, okay, she was like, download the app. I think you should download it and see for yourself. A second parent came to me too, said the same thing. An old friend of mine who stays abroad, who was on the same flight with him, he traveled with a girl and you know, they were all lovey-dovey on the plane and everything. He's never taken me and my kids anywhere, but he lies about it and I know. So, so this brings me back to, you know, how I, ah, I don't know what brought me to this, but yeah. Yeah. Do you have a Bible? Mm. We all have Bibles on our palms. So I can swear and tell you that from the day he walked into my life till the day he left, I was never with any man. You know, that's the easiest. That's, that's what most men talk about, whether it's true or not. When couples have issues, these are the, you know, the things that you hear. Honestly, I'm not bothered. And these 
this is not the reason why I'm speaking up. I'm speaking up for my kids, my girls. I'm not, I'm not here to defend myself. I'm not here to say whether I cheated or I did not cheat though. You know, I know that's not why. That's not why I came out. People saw my post on my story. They saw my bloody nose, they saw my arm. The point wasn't to tell you people that he was beating me. I wanted to get his attention. I've been, I've been seeking his attention. I've been trying to get him to speak with me. I have texted, we've gone to court. I have tried to reach out to people that know him. I have gone to FIDA, called. If they check their DM, they will see me there. I don't know why it takes some of these organizations a very long time to respond. I have been screaming for a very long time now. So it didn't just start today. I made that move. I put up that post to get his attention and I knew I was going to get it. And I knew the card he was going to play next because that card he played is not a secret. And I challenge him to show the world the complete video. You saw the video where I was hitting the door. I challenge him to please post the, the complete video so that the world can see what I looked like when I walked through that door. I'm challenging Nadu. Let him post the full video. Yeah. It's been, it's been hard. I will not lie, it's been very hard. Because you go to school and people talk about them. You see the DNA report he posted. He was so petty that he brought it to the school. He took it to the principal's office. He showed the principal. That's why when I posted, I said it wasn't a secret. School has resumed. My kids can go to school. They can't. Until all of this is over. I've tried to protect them. I, I know what. I know their complaints when they come back home. I have to deal with it. I have to go to school. I have to warn the teachers. I have to keep talking. He doesn't know this part because he's not around. How many times does he call them? Even when he calls, he does not know the important things to ask. He hasn't spent time with his kids. He just, hello. Kayla, how are you? How was your day? Did you go to school? How is school? Are you okay? Daddy loves you. All right, bye. There are days when Kayla is sick. There are days when the baby is sick too. There are days when they come back and somebody says something nasty to them in school. And I have to deal with it. That's my duty. And that's why I just said, you know what? I'm going all out. Anything anybody wants to say, let them say. Have you gone to my page? Have you seen my page? Have you seen what they're saying to me? How do you think that makes me feel? Some of them, of course, everything is a lie. Have you seen what some of his colleagues are saying? I'm, 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 I'm not done. I'm coming for them. <laughs> I'm not done. How do you think that makes me feel? People are talking about me. They're dragging my children into it. Telling me not to ruin my children's lives with my ruined life. 
prostitute mother, how are you going to raise children? If this is what it will take, hmm? I will. If you ask me if I will do this again, I will do it a thousand times. For those children. <laughs> I'm okay, let's go. <laughs> you people don't understand. I know you guys are just hearing it. But it is not and has never been a secret. <laughs> this is a document that almost everybody has because I constantly get them from strangers. Like I'll, I'll just stay and somebody just sends it to my WhatsApp. I don't know you. People call me, people text me. It's been going on for a while. This is something he knows about. We both know. And for him, for every time I wanted to make a move to speak up, to find a way to just... See, I don't want a dubaco. I, I don't. I never want him back. I can't even stay in the same space with him. I don't want him back. I'm doing this for my children. So for every time I try to speak up or say something or do something, I get messages like from him. Oh, you that gave me another man's child. Oh, you that gave me another man's child. Now, I was seeing somebody before I met Nidu. I was in a relationship and that relationship ended. But before that relationship ended, Nidu had already seen my picture somewhere on our mutual friends. Um, WhatsApp or so, and then had been disturbing her to, you know, I, I, I need to meet this girl and all. You get, and shortly after that relationship ended, around that time, I said, okay, you know what? Uh, my service here is coming to an end. I'll just, let me just go to Lagos and um, tell, you know, just, just come to Lagos. I have um, my half siblings in Lagos. So I, I came to Lagos and I met Nidu. Of course, I gave him headache, you get, and um, he seemed like a very cool person. I was like, hey, why not? Well, you know, he's totally different from some of the, you know, the guys I've been with. But I looked beyond the physical, you know, we, we vibed. We had a great time. Like the first day we met, it was awesome we had a great time we clicked and i was like you guys cool i mean we can give it a try and then as it was you know i found i was pregnant trust me i didn't even think the other way so if if you see the dna report i'm sure you saw the, the dates the year you know so you can see when he conducted that i mean i'm hearing my team everybody you know i'm hearing that um on twitter they're saying he wanted to take them to canada or something and he decided to conduct the dna let me tell you what happened so along the line while we were still married, Nidu became insecure, very insecure. And he was doubting the paternity of my, my last child, the second girl. He went about telling, I mean, he, his colleagues were calling me and they, I heard things like, um, Nidu said you guys only had sex once and you say you're pregnant. Please, how many times do you have to have sex to get pregnant? So he was doubting the paternity of that child and he went to find out. Unfortunately for him, it was the first. 
Trust me, I knew he was going to do that. But that is, we all know that. Well, I don't know about you guys, but that is so low. And with, oh, <laughs> I can't remember my child. If the world will stand against him, I will not. I am owning it. That is why I've decided to tell my story and tell my truth. I always say I've made peace with God and that is what is important to me. My child will be fine. And what was funny about this whole thing was why all these years he's been going about talking about this boy, making him look like the reason why, why we separated. The boy wasn't the reason. Now he goes about telling people about this boy, you know, saying all manner of things about my child. Then at home, he calls my son's phone and says, Daddy loves you. I miss you so much. Dad is going to do this for you. Dad is going to do that for you. So for us, we're giving him time to see, okay, is he trying to claim this child? You understand? Is he trying to now say, okay, you know what? Hey, shit happens. I'm going to love this boy. I mean, he's always known me. You get? Or for what he did two days ago, we all know he doesn't deserve my son. He didn't even as much as blur out his name. He put it out there. And it's fine. For me, I keep saying it to everybody. I didn't lock my page. I left it open. This is me coming out to the world, stark naked. Kick me, spit on me, insult me. Say everything you want to say. Judge me if that will make you feel better. As for me, I'm doing what will make me sleep better at night. He's my child. He's my son. And I said there, let us focus on the girls. This is why I'm speaking out. I'm not here to come and make him lose his job. I don't want him to lose his job. That's not why I'm here. I'm here for my girls. I know that they, they can have a better life. We're done. We didn't want to be with each other again. Excuse me. We, we had made up our mind. We didn't want to do this anymore. You know. And never for one day has he ever mentioned anything concerning the boy in court. He has always, you know, claimed that <clears throat> they all belong to him. It wasn't about the kids. It was never about the children. We were done. We tried. It did not work. We were done. I mean, a year after he walked out of the house, because he left the house the, the, the last time he beat me up, that was the year he left. In fact, that day, after that beating, he just entered his car and left. He didn't even go with clothes or anything. She was, his things are still, some of his things are still with me, but as, you know, rags in my kitchen. So, he left. A year after that, he got married. And we were still legally married. I don't want to call names because I know the people who attended the wedding. So, it was never about the kids or anybody. We were done. <music> Yes, but I got it now, didn't I? Yeah, to an extent, I got his attention. At least he, he, he put up, he made a statement. And then now you guys know that my son is not his son. But don't forget that name. Munachi. Try not to forget that name.
happen. What I want to happen is for my kids to be fine, their welfare, a roof over their heads, school fees paid, medical bills taken care of. I even wrote on my page and you know the blogs took it up too. I said, we can even share 50-50, but right now I mean man, that 50-50 means -50, man, so hell with it. Nedu can afford it. He can make it happen now. Ah, don't you know Nedu? I be what is he doing with all the money that MTN is giving him? Okay, let me not call names. Let me not call brands. Let me not call these guys. Let me not call them. But what is he doing? I mean, I've been at parties where they're discussing him and they don't even know that I'm his wife. You know, most people are just finding out that he wasn't. And I'm wondering, who, who were the people at my wedding? Were they ghosts? How come nobody knew he was married? I've been at the party and they were discussing him of how he, you know, he bought a car for one of his girls and all of that. Like I have receipts, but these are things I don't want to talk about. Now my girls, they do me. I want them to be fine. They're in the village now. I want them to be fine. I want them to be comfortable. I want them to be able to go to school. They will not lack anything. It's not the one that you eat today. You don't know what you eat tomorrow. Or every day in Domi. They are tired of eating in Domi because there's no other option. And we're still doing, you know, and some people know that these are the, Have you seen my first daughter? I posted their pictures yesterday on my page. She's this carbon copy. You don't know the baby. So I don't want them to have to eat their last and wonder where the next one will come. I want them to be comfortable. That's why I'm doing this. I'm not asking for anything for me. It's just my children. It's just my kids, my girls. My boy will be fine. He's sorted. I think I had already mentioned it. I'm not sure. What does for your summer guy, the Bin Laden guy, who has taken it upon himself? to finish himself and not me. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> You'll hear from me very soon. You'll hear from me. I'm sure you heard about it, right? You'll hear from me. All right, I'm not done. We sure hope you enjoyed this video. For more entertaining video content such as behind the scenes of music videos and movies, music concerts, premieres, interviews and exclusive gists, subscribe now to our YouTube channel Goldmine TV and be unleashed into a world of super excitement.